Monk's Last Case, released in 2023 on Peacock. You don't have to be a Monk fan to understand and sit through this. Great Adrian Monk. For a while there, you were solving a major case every week. I couldn't have done it alone. I could have, but it would have taken longer. I have traumatic symptoms unprecedented in psychiatric history. He's afraid of heights. It's his second biggest fear after germs. Actually, it goes germs, needles, birds, then heights. That was no accident. He was murdered. You have to help me. Turn, turn it, turn it, turn it. There's a bomb. There's a bomb. You're not helping. We should leave a note. When COVID hit, I was in bad shape. This is mine. Look at us. Everybody's you. They're going to hate it. Here's what happened. So how does that feel to be working again? Like riding a bicycle. Oh, I'm glad to hear that. I mean, it's terrifying. This movie version of our brilliant detective with obsessive compulsive disorder picks up post-pandemic as he's still trying to put his life together after the death of his wife and separation from friends. Uh, but uh, there's all, also a pending wedding taking place. In the midst of this, of course, a murder must be solved. And that's where Tony Shalhoub's character is recreated uh, under the direction of Randy Zisk and the writing of Andy Breckman, who's also one of the founders of this uh, series that um, has just uh, continued to... Uh, to run, of course, in reruns on some of the smaller channels on your cable TV there. Uh, Trailer Howard returns as Natalie, and uh, Jason Gray Stanford comes back in his role. He is now a sheriff in another county instead of being an assistant detective to uh, our Ted Levine, who, of course, is Lieutenant Stottlemyre. And ironically, in this episode, he's playing for the bad guy. And um, Hector Elizondo shows up again as uh, Tony Shalhoub, Adrian Monk's uh, psychiatrist to help us get through it. The bad guy here is James Purefoy, played by Rick Eden. The episode is as aggravating as the TV series was, and therein lies the charm of Monk, Adrian Monk, and all that he goes through. And when it looks just like there's no way he can solve the case, well, something comes up to help him solve the case. And this is no different. Again, um, it's well acted. It's well carried out. It looks like it could be 10 to 15 years later that our hero picks up his life. And again, it's an aggravating episode, but that's how all of the episodes were when you consider what Monk is going through. The thing about it here in the writing of, uh, of Breckman and Company is that it doesn't appear that uh, our hero has grown very much with his uh, obsessive compulsive disorder. Uh, but I guess that's what it is. It wouldn't be Monk if he didn't do that. It was okay. It was all right. I think you'll like it. You don't have to be a Monk fan, but you do need to know the history in order to enjoy this episode. And that's what brings it down a couple of notches. Because if you don't know Monk's history, you probably won't enjoy this as much. So that's, uh, that's what we have for uh, Monk's last case. Eight of Ten Stars, released in 2023 on Peacock. Lucy. Released in 2014 on Netflix, this terrifying roller coaster ride is worth a second look. What happened? What did you do to my stomach? What's going on? You've nearly slipped a little package into your lower tummy, and you're going to transport something very special to us.
no, no, no. You speak English? Yes, yes. Take me to the hospital now. Hospital. Somebody put a bag of drugs inside me. I need you to take it out. It's leaking. It is estimated most human beings only use 10% of the brain's capacity. Imagine if we could access 100%. Interesting things begin to happen. Yes? Professor Norman, my name's Lucy. I just read all your research on the human brain. It's a little rudimentary, but you're on the right track. Thank you. I have access to 28% of my cerebral capacity. I can feel every living thing. Since when did you start writing Chinese? Since now ago. What happens when she reaches 100%? I have no idea. All this knowledge. You can unlock secrets that go beyond our universe. I'm not even sure that mankind is ready for it. It's like all things that make me human are fading away. Scarlett Johansson and Morgan Freeman. Those are the two headline names for this film. But of course, it is Scarlett Johansson that carries it all the way through. A woman is accidentally caught in a dark deal. and But she turns the tables on those who put her in this deal. A mysterious blue crystal is, is surgically implanted in her and five or six other uh, unknowing subjects. Who are, saw, who are used as mules to bring this powder back to the underworld characters in Taipei and China. And the trip from point A to point B is something to behold. This is written, and scripting is always a thing in any film. Scripting is a thing. It's written, produced, and directed by Luke Besson, who, of course, is best known for um, Nikita, and the fifth element. It is well worth your time for this one. Morgan Freeman gets to play Morgan Freeman, the educated, well-written, well-spoken professor who has a lot of theories about how the human brain can work and how it can evolve, but has never seen it actually put into play. Lucy gives all of us a chance to see what if, what could happen if one had the ability to use 100% of your brain. It's full of action, full of drama, uh, well, a lot of violence, but that's to be expected given uh, what our heroine has to go through. But it's well worth your time. It moves along. It doesn't drag. We don't get a whole lot of backstory about who Lucy was uh, we All we get to see, quite frankly, is who she is and who she may become. Lucy, released in 2014. You can now see it again on Netflix. It is certainly well worth your time. Nine of ten stars. <laughs>